With the debut of Death Battle Season 2024, formerly known as Season Kickstarter, right around the corner, I think it's worth doing one last Death Battle video before kickstarting <laughs> the new independent era of the show. And if you've been following my Death Battle content so far, I think it's fair to say I've been extremely positive about either Season 10, my most wanted matchups, or the future of the show as a whole. But you can't have life without shallow. So today I'm gonna talk about my least wanted Death Battle matchups. Disclaimer that this is all just my opinion, please don't take it as anything else beyond that if I happen to talk shit about a matchup you personally like. Also this video won't be as heavily edited as my last two Death Battle videos, both because I want to experiment how y'all like this approach and because I like to have a narrated video I don't, I don't have to work a whole month on. Also also, this video was low-key clickbait because I discuss both matchups I dislike in general, characters I don't like being in the setting period or even all franchises. You'll see what I mean soon enough. Subscribe for more Dead Battle stuff and let's begin. Trigon vs Dormammu. I get it, it's a battle between hellish, basically but not quite Satans from DC and Marvel. But like, after Galactus vs Unicron, my excitement for big cosmic comic book matchups kinda fizzled out. At a certain point it just kinda becomes a light show of different powers and effects sparked by characters that don't have nearly as much of a personality to match. Even the uber exception to this, the upcoming Kyle vs Simon, has, has me with lukewarm excitement and even that's because I know the team will give all the passion behind it, even while feeding Simon to a DC Herald. I'm serious, my opinion on this type of matchup will change if Simon somehow pulls the impossible and wins against all odds, which would be perfectly in character by the way. Back on topic, yeah, this would have probably been an interesting idea for past me, but the current me would rather consume some ground at the Marvel DC stuff, you know? Seriously, I gladly take a matchup that stops at building level, please and thank you. Actually, how about Ghost Rider vs Spawn, which is like this matchup except it's actually interesting. <laughs> oh my god, am I, am I sounding too mean? Am I going to hell? On the opposite end of coin book matchups we have the Joker vs Green Goblin. I gotta be honest, I'm actually glad they went with a wildcard when they ultimately brought Joker into the show. Was it probably because someone in the crew really really liked the Joker mobile in Arkham Knight? Maybe, but honestly seeing these characters you never imagined to see together, even on this show, is to me as part of a charm as much as anticipating the most famous matchups. To me at least. It would be been easy to do a quote obvious Joker matchup like this one. Yeah they're both green and purple arch nemesis, they both laugh a lot, they both do chemistry and stuff, but I just think it's too two thousands of a matchup idea to do nowadays, it's too obvious, too just cause. And frankly their fighting style just don't match at all, or their characters honestly. I just think Norman is too much of a personally psychological type of evil compared to Joker's more impersonal chaos, I love contrast in my matchups, but they gotta be a finishing touch, not the whole package. Hell, I am a Junko Trap fan and I still think Junko and Oshima is a better matchup for Joki Boy than Norman. Norman could fight, uh, I don't know, David Santos from Guy Girls. Even though now that, now that I say it out loud it would probably be just a watered down Iron Man vs Batman. So yeah, instead of dropping bombs, this matchup just kinda drops my enthusiasm. You are not him, you are not him. No, 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 no. On the topic of contrast, I also happen to not be too much of a fan of matchups with too few of them, like say Aku vs him. These two are so similar to one another in terms of personality, powers, motifs, narrative plays, etc. that I don't think there will be much of a dynamic between the two, if any. They are by all means the same character, down to creating a dark future full of evil as soon as the evils got displaced in time. My most wanted for Aku is also a Cartoon Network 4, except he feels a totally opposite spot in the story, the superpower dynamic would be actually fun, and the banter potential is called because of their contrasting personalities. I don't know man, I don't know man, this matchup kinda proves why I always reiterate that connections aren't everything, even to someone who is arguably obsessed with matchups that have a ton of them. So when it comes to Aku best opponent, sorry my devilish crab fella, but you are not him. Me and probably half the internet already went over what doesn't work about 
Ben 10 vs Al Jordan as an episode, but as a matchup I think it's honestly great for both. Ben 10 vs Jaden, animated as an upcoming project by Dead Bell Animator Origin the Hero, also pretty great. Then you have Ben 10 vs Blue Beetle. Like, why? Yeah, sure, they're both teenage heroes that got a sentient shapeshifting device from space, but like, it's just a vastly less interesting Ben 10 vs Generator Rex to me. The latter being a much better opponent for Aimee, ironically enough, even though both Cartoon Network heroes are into the same world or facing a DC world. I also just don't think his bodily transformations match well with Ben's vastly more versatile arsenal on top of lacking the green on green chromatic satisfaction that all 10 brings. And don't get me started on Ben 10 vs Beast Boy, like, my god, okay, okay, green shape shifters, I get it, but like, that's material for a Cartoon Network bumper short, not a dead battle. He's basically in the same ballpark as Joker Goblin when it comes to it sounds cool for a few seconds, then you realize it just doesn't work. The thing about the Ben 10 matchups is that you really gotta fight something that they can channel the character's creativity instead of, but hey, Alien X. Hell, even the DBX somehow understood this battle than the actual episode Ben is in. So yeah, instead of supporting this matchup, support Origin the Hero's upcoming Ben 10 vs Jaden animation, as it will feature UAF Ben with an Omniverse watch and he'll fight a young hero with just as many monsters on his belt. Or, well, deck. Zawaruto! Stop saying that! Dio Brando vs Ryoman Sukuna. I get it, they're both popular, very cocky, elegant yet also savage anime villains with a big area of effect power that makes all their enemies powerless. Also, they both started as normal people before abandoning humanity and becoming monsters, but let's be honest, do you associate a specific part with Sukuna as much as you would to Dio? And their similarities as villains are just very generic to me. Their powers don't match at all, and there just isn't any story to tell. Take Dio vs Alucard for example. Dio is basically a dark mirror of Alucard, with both being vampires that are the result of abandoning humanity to gain advantage. Except, Alucard ultimately came to hate himself and other monstrous beings, hoping to be defeated by a human. Meanwhile, Dio takes pride at how monstrous and inhuman he can get, embodying everything Alucard hates, while the latter is everything Dio wants to be, a powerful, feared and respected vampire with an army on his back. Couple all that with the contrasting religious motifs of hell, heaven and hell, the dynamic between their powers, and you have an amazing matchup for both, which results in an amazing episode to match. If you really want to bring Dio back without seeming desperate and trying to capitalize on what's popular, and you don't want to delve into what if territory either, JJK already has a good matchup for Dio. Kenjaku. Right off the bat, they both follow the very green trope of possessing the corpse of a rare character, with telltale signs of that being on the head area, originated from a bygone era. They both have ideologies centered around finding the peak of existence and forcing all mankind to witness it. They work in the shadows to achieve it all, but they were slain before completing their project, leaving someone else to carry their plans. But there's the big contrast that Dio ultimately wants ultimate peace, kinda, creating a universe where everyone knows their fate, while Kenjaku wants to unleash complete chaos and hell via the merge, that somehow even more than the alien era he comes from, meaning that they would hate each, hate each other on sight. Couple of that with the cursed spirits Kenjaku can throw at Dio, ironically in a Gojo vs Makima type of way, plus their powers messing gravity and time respectfully, and you got yourself a pretty damn good matchup for both if you ask me. If you wanna hear about my ideal matchup for Sukuna, check out my most wanted vid. The amount of characters that can work on that battle is very large. Most anime characters, superheroes and supervillains, movie characters, game characters, murderers, martial artists, and yes, even pacifists. But there's a character whose relationship with violence is so unique that I don't personally think it belongs anywhere near a versus setting. That would be Hugh Campbell from The Boys. In a world full of armorial quote heroes on both sides, Yui represents a shining light of innocence that tries to stray off corruption to defy violence, even in a world seemingly made for and by violence. The Boys isn't exactly lacking for superpowered violent characters that clearly fit right at home with the show, but Yui just has some electrician skills and the power to teleport, and that was doing a very specific arc where that's clearly something he should not be doing, meaning adding it to his power set to a standard power set just doesn't work at all for the character. I respectfully, I respectfully don't care how many thematic similarities he has 
with a guy from Supernatural or whatever. I just wish people learn to tell the difference between these characters are thematically similar and this would work as a death battle. Like, I generally seen Mayor Jones vs. Grunkle Stan being suggested. How? What would you do? Would you want to see two old men fight? I, I mean, I do, but not these ones, not in this setting. Like, why? What do you even include during the breakdown? The two people they punched throughout the old show? Would you scale that? I, I don't get it, man. I don't know. I just am confused about certain ideas people suggest, man. I am a pious man. Now, don't get me wrong, you can have disgustingly evil characters on the show, both my favorite and most wanted episodes prove that just fine, but with Judge Frollo, I think they feel a similar way to how Nemesis Bloodrike feels about Fire Lord Ozai being on the show. He is not really a fighter or a combatant. He has no particular powers or feats, he just swings a sword around and lasts minutes of his appearance. Not to mention the specific kind of evil he embodies, an uncomfortably realistic kind. And sure, we had those before, but I just think Frodo lacks the cool fiction stuff element that marks the difference between supervillain and grim reminder that there's people like this in real life. That line of detachment, you know? I don't know anything about this George Olden guy, besides the fact that apparently he's up there with some of the evilest dudes in fiction, which is interesting thematically, but not so much in a combat sense. Humongous hunger longer no no lo gong. Any VTuber matchup. Like, how would that even work? It's girls playing as Japanese waifus in front of a webcam. I even follow some. But th th how do you fit them in a versus setting? I know some of them have like lore, but what footage would you even put while describing it? Gameplays? Fan animations? Like, it's kind of the same problem SCP stuff has, but I like, at least those have actual action and combat and stuff. What fits do they have? Like, my original character, take my original character for example, my persona, Falco, who's a Kryptonian. He obviously can fly, shoot laser beams, and all the standard Kryptonian power set. I say the 8 vision skulls around, I don't know, Titan from Megamind at worst and Godzilla lasing into the earth at best. This fact alone doesn't make Falco a viable character for a death battle episode, you know? Although, if any of y'all wants to make fan animations of Falco, you have permission to do it, just saying. Like, it's basically, it's basically the same reason why I don't think YouTuber matchups work. I don't know, maybe I just need a big enlightening awakening that apparently Melly had and I just missed, but I just don't see how this works, man. So if I sound close-minded, I'm usually quite the opposite, but I don't get it how this is treated as an idea outside of memes. Shockingly as it may sound, next up we have most Superman matchups, honestly. Not necessarily because of any disliking to its character, I mean, notice how my username is not Hawk of Gotham, but because of the formula with the show itself, in which characters are taken at their full potential. And with Superman, unfortunately, the peak of Superman makes any debate potential with pretty much everyone else moot, because you know who wins. Not to mention how his other, his two most famous matchups aren't something I took, I'm too keen on either. Like, sure. He shares a lot of thematic with Optimus Prime, but like, it's one thing to have at least one pacifist idealist in this fight, even the, even the won't fight unless forced to kind, but like, what would he even fight about? Can the might might friendly competition approach really work for a fifth time, even with a respectful death? I'm sorry, but it's just not my thing. Ditto for Superman vs the Doctor. Sure, they're both idealistic, less sons of doomed planets, who are essentially Deus Ex Machina's embodiment, embodied, but in completely opposite ways, with Superman being pretty much a reality puncher as far as power goes, whereas the Doctor is more about literal plot armor as a pacifist. I don't think they gelled well together at all. I say most Superman matchups because you could do something with a specific Superman, like when they use a specific Aquaman, but besides that, I think his trilogy with Goku is a good place to leave it. I love Superman for many different reasons, and versus power scaling is not on that list. Peanuts! Oh boy, another spicy one. I'm normally not one against tonal clash, even with how much I think Tarantino style violence doesn't mesh well with Spike's families at all, but like, sure, the matchup is good. You can have some fun with it and your undeniably wins, but still, let's just say this show and this character have been a I've been in a very dear place in my heart, 
when I needed it during a tough time, hence why I'm not comfortable with the idea of them, any of them being put in a setting where they say stripped of plot armor, even when I know your your wins. Did you notice how I never brought up Tangelo vs Jonathan in spite of all my praise for emotional endings? Well, that's because I refuse to watch an episode or mentions of it because I don't want to see a comfort character of mine die. I do plan to make in a video where I rank all of that battle's emotional deaths, so I will have to check it out by then, but we'll cross that bridge once we get to it. Back on the topic, I actually have no problems per se with this happening as an episode, I just don't like the idea of it. The next one is probably the most controversial of them all. We have Yuji Tadori vs Denji. I know, they are the best for both. I know, the connections are pretty great. It's popular as hell, would work as a sequel to Gojo vs Makima, and the music would undeniably work. But cutting straight to the point, I just don't wanna see two minors whose whole lives are very tired, very tight to constant trauma and murder, be forced to kill one another. Well, sure, Yuji got a lot stronger and powerful since the Machan first started being popular, but Denji kinda encounters an issue similar to Yui, in the sense that the hero of form isn't a power up he can activate at any time. It's activated by specific moments of trauma and despair within the story. I and I don't think that fighting methods work either way, with slashy slashy chainsawy versus energy field martial arts. I hate complaining about something without having an alternate solution in mind, and so why I m most picks in, in this days come with precisely like that. But I accept that this. I also accept that this is the most likely for both, and I just don't quite know how to feel about it. I just think Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen do such a great job exploring the hazards of forcing the youth into being cogwheels for seasons of mentally numbing trauma and pain, probably a very topic in Japan, that I just don't think putting the two characters who represent such cogs against each other would do justice to either. And that's pretty much it, I hope I get to cover the premiere of season 2024 as soon as possible, either via reaction and review, or both in best case scenario. Drink lots of water, I'll do the same. Oko Krypton, hoping that I made your day slightly better.